Well, well, holy relationship is is relationship where you've you there's this joy and love and happiness, but the but all sense of demand, all sense of desire to get. I, if you can imagine just erasing, you know, it's that that beautiful love, heart-centered connection that you feel, you know, in romantic relationship. And then if you could just take like the eraser and erase some other aspects that seem to be like an overlay that gets the ego wants to draw on top. And that's where the, the getting mechanism is so strong. And then like with our time traveler's wife, you know, the getting mechanism also brings about this sense of expectation. Uh, when you want to get something from somebody, then you have an expectation. And uh, we all know how unfulfilled expectations feel. You know, there's a sense of emptiness. There's a sense of, no, wait a minute, that's why I got into the relationship, you know. There's a bit of this, I'll meet your needs and you meet my needs thing. And, and the needs, if you go down underneath the needs, there are expectation. And if you go underneath the expectation, there's still that getting mechanism. And, and so that's why he says, on some pathways you travel gaily along for a while. Uh, and before the darkness enters in. When you start to look at the whole idea of relationships, holy relationship versus romantic relationship, you start to realize that, that once you start to get into to the realm of, of holy relationship, it, it goes into a whole other dimension in the sense that, for example, like when we talk about romantic relationships, you could even bring in the concept of like soulmates. Uh, that's very much in the realm of romantic relationship. And we could say vibrationally that would be more the tippy top of of the realm of romantic. That would be more the ideal. Uh, it could seem in this world like it's so rare that people sometimes doubt the existence of such things. And then there are others that say, well actually I have experienced that, so it would be there. Then you go up towards holy relationship, and that's when, if you go to the teacher's manual of A Course in Miracles, Jesus describes, he basically says that all relationships are, are the same. It's really like you're relating to yourself, but he throws out three metaphors, you know, the casual encounters, the second level of teaching learning where two people come together for a fairly intense teaching learning situation and then appear to separate. And then the third level is lifelong um, relationships where you're given a lifelong partner for teaching and learning. Now it would seem on the surface that, would, that the lifelong would probably fit over in the soulmate category until you read between the lines of what he's talking about. Because it, when you read between the lines and you say, wait, this can't be. <laughs> a soulmate relationship, the two, uh, you know, may find that there, uh, there are hostilities between them and um, he says, perhaps for life. Hostilities? Perhaps for life? <laughs> oh, that's not, that's not a romantic soulmate relationship. That's not in any of my my books on soulmates. That's just <laughs> not even there. So he's like pointing to, it's higher than that. And he says that, but if they decide to learn it, the perfect lesson is before them and can be learned. You know, it comes off on an optimistic note, but the way he's describing it, it's, it's not describing it in terms of romantic soulmates. So you kind of get that sense a little bit from, um, a little bit from like Helen Shuckman and Bill Thedford, you know, their roles on, in terms of worldly roles, where they were at Columbia University, uh, Bill hired Helen, so he was literally her boss of the, of the research psychology department there, and um, she was already married uh, to Louis, and so it wasn't the typical kind of, you wouldn't say that was soulmate, <laughs> kind of thing that way. And they did have a lot of difficulties. They had a lot of hostilities 
that were coming up. And it was starting back in the 50s, you know, up until the period when uh, Helen passed. Um, you might say that they, they did have a, a, a lifelong relationship, at least during those years, and there was a lot of hostilities. And they did join together and were able to, to bring the Course in this great tool of awakening, even though they had personal and professional challenges and a lot of hostilities that came into their relationship. So in that sense, it's, it's more on the lines of collaboration, like it's a, it's a very collaborative relationship that's aimed at a, at a high purpose. And I've been talking about that lately in terms of it being undefined, it being guided, and it being collaborative. Those are three words that, that I really use as describing holy relationship. And in that sense, it's, it's different from romantic because it it's just has such, it's so much dedicated to this higher purpose. And, but we all know the feeling of collaboration. It feels wonderful when you feel like you're working together and you're collaborating. And I would say the more pure that becomes, the more you're doing it for the Holy Spirit and there's no egoic goals creeping into that, you feel an intense joy. In fact, I really feel like my whole life has turned into kind of one giant collaboration where I'm collaborating with course teachers, course students. Uh, when I go off to other cultures, um, like when I went down to Australia, they said, um, uh, I was staying at this uh, woman's house in Sydney, Francis, and, and um, after I stayed with her for about several days, she said, well, would you like to meet my guru? And uh, I said, oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. And so she said, well, my guru has a kind of a combination name between Isis and Ra. Um, her name is Isai Ra. Uh, it's kind of Isis and Ra. I said, very good. So I but she's, they, she said, well, she's got a very, very full schedule. And I can see you're, you're seeing all these people. You've got a very full schedule here at my house. You've got people coming and going all the time. So she said, we'll just try to arrange something. And sure enough, she finally uh, came to me one day and she said, can you go now? And I said, yes. She said, okay, she's got an opening too. We went there and I went to visit her. And she had come from uh, the Aboriginal tradition, had long blonde hair and was known as the Laughing Saint. Uh, one time I think she laughed for a period of like two weeks consecutively <laughs> without stopping. Uh, and, and it had come through the Buddhist uh, tradition. So we went there and it was just presence, just beautiful divine presence, just, just lots of joy and laughter and it was you know, just like meeting yourself in, a very, in the happiest sense possible. And we were there for a while and then um, I told her, well, I'm actually doing an Easter retreat at a Buddhist monastery, a Buddhist retreat center. So I said, uh, on Easter would you come to uh, the retreat center with me? And I won't tell anybody, I'll just tell them it's a surprise. And uh, so they worked with, they were with me a whole week. It came to be Easter morning and here comes with the full entourage the whole thing came in glowing, happy, and they got a couple chairs. So I sat down next to her, and and they even had a like a nice white, furry blanket, so her feet, you know, wouldn't have to touch the ground uh, during the talk and so forth. And she she scooted it over. She said, "You want some of my blanket?" I said, "Yes." I did. So we both put our f little feet on the blanket and. And it was fun because I said, this will be great. It will be symbolic. We have the symbol of the male, the female. Easter at a Buddhist retreat center. I said, this feels like a divine orchestration of just sharing, sharing, sharing. And we just had a ball. Actually, if, if you, I think we've got the, the CDs of that. It's called Blue Mountains Retreat. Um, down there. We probably even have a copy of it at the end with us there. And it was fun because I do remember at one point she started burst into laughter and everybody started laughing and there was a woman who'd been with me the whole week and she just kept waving her arm and going, stop! Stop! This is hurting my cheeks! <laughs> and the Syro just was like, 
No. <laughs> the laughter is not hurting you. <laughs> it's like, you know, so it was really beautiful, but it was, it's so, that's just an example of collaboration, you know, it's, it's, uh, she actually had a, um, a Buddhist nun who was her, uh, they said her, her, her name is Lilani and she was her chief executive assistant. And I just looked at my friends and I said, how come I don't have a chief executive <laughs> assistant? But it was, we just were so playful with the whole thing. And then finally, Lilani just came up to me and she just said, oh, this was so great. She said, you don't know how healing this is, that we need more of this. We need more teachers coming together side by side and letting the message come through. I let it come through more in Course in Miracles vernacular uh, that I was working with the people with. And she let it come through more in Buddhist uh, terms. And there was just this joy and union and love and oneness and laughter which is what the experience is about. It's not about this versus that. It's just the, an experience. And so f I feel like that's the way my whole life has gone. It's, it's very much collaborative. I'm always, you know, whether it's a Course in Miracles teacher like Gary Renard and I doing something together in, in Hawaii, or John Mundy and I did something together, different ones, or from other teachers in other traditions, I often get, uh, invited when I'm traveling to ashrams and it's it's kind of fun. I enjoy going to ashrams and going in there and just, it doesn't matter what the vernacular, what the language is, it's love is the same. So to me, the, that's one of the distinguishing factors of holy relationship. It is highly collaborative, you know, where personal differences are completely set aside and you just yield into that experience of the love radiating, you know, that's that's really what it's all about.